this is one of the only AIs that you can directly integrate in Godot and it can actually with one click actions okay with one button that you press add scripts add scenes all this without having to do anything we are like connecting to a terminal connecting to an api nothing like that it's basically a go to plugin which is called game dev assistant and you can get it by going to gamedevassistant.com this is not a paid promotion or anything like that it's a complete genuine recommendation and you can directly access it by pressing here on access now you basically uh, put your email address they send you a verification code and with that you start using this ai okay uh so it has a free plan and a paid plan okay of course the, with the free plan you still have access to a lot of features but not to not uh, to literally everything and you also have uh, some limits some usage limits but just to try it out is is uh, good enough in order to integrate it into your Godot project, you basically download the plugin, which is gonna directly download this zip, uh, which I'm gonna extract right now. Something I have to know, I've been trying this with Godot 4.5, but it seems that he says Godot 4.4 plus, but it doesn't say Godot 4.5. So I recommend that you actually use Godot 4.4. And in order to do this, uh, you just go to godotengine.org. Uh, you will press here says uh, says previous version and you will actually go to 4.4.1 stable in this case so i'm just gonna download this version and i'm actually gonna be using this version to test this out okay so here is the project uh, being created okay um once again in 4.5 at least in the moment of recording this video okay uh, 28 september it does not really work that well uh, at least from my experience and just to set this up, what we have to do is copy your token, okay? Uh, then over here, inside of your resources, what we have to do is uh, here grab the, the folder, game dev assistant, cut it, put it inside your project folder, but before add an add ons folder and paste it there, okay? Then go inside your Godot, your Godot project. This is just as if you were importing a normal plugin and you enable it over here from project settings, uh, plugins, you turn it on, close project reload current project let's give it a second and now with this game the assistant is on how do you know if it is if you go to the very top left top right sorry you press on this arrow and you will find this assistant you will have to set it up first which is just pasting your token uh, so you have to copy it and then paste it and press save and with that it's done and you can start asking whatever you want so I'm going to ask for this, create a simple, let me just make this wider, create a simple 2D controller, I move with W, A, S, and D, as simple as that. Once again, the key thing here, I don't have to be going, the, for example, to JTPT and copying the script and pasting it here, I don't have to be adding manually the node, this AI should be able to do it 100% on its own. So as you can see here, it's working, it, it's actually pretty fast, okay? Uh, so you first have like all the instructions okay that with the, with which you can do it yourself or you can wait until you have your one click actions generated which really don't take that long as you can see at least for a simple instruction so you can press apply all okay and in a second you should basically have it all if at any moment you encounter some kind of problem as in this case here it says that we have created a player scene but it's not here what you have to do is reload the current project okay and let's give it a second sometimes this happens okay and you can open up the player scene here it is and here it is okay so we have the collision shape we have literally everything and the code here it is okay okay so pretty clean we even have comments to understand what is going on and we can run this scene and we should be able to move around as you can see with just a few text prompts okay now uh I've asked for something like add a main scene, instantiate the player, add a UI that tells me how much seconds I've been playing for. Okay, actually, uh, how, how many seconds I've been playing for, but uh, it's clear. Okay, so once again, let's give it a second. So let's see if he's actually able to do it because it was um, a more complex instruction, but it wasn't still that complicated. So let's just press here, apply all. Let's check it. Okay, so we do have the main scene. We didn't have any kind of problem. We have the UI, we have the player, so pretty interesting. It does seem promising. We have time. Okay, let's press play. Okay, and let's see. Okay. <laughs> Once again, we're just pressing one button. This was done, so pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, even we have not only seconds, but milliseconds. So that's pretty interesting. And let's take a look at the code, which is over here. Uh, process, play some plus equals delta, uh, 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 it's formatted over here, okay, so, yeah, literally, 
Perfect. <laughs> now, uh, what else could we have? We need some kind of enemy, right? Um, so, mm -mm -mm. let's go with something like this. Enemies can spawn every three seconds at, at random screen positions. If a player will collide with them, a simple game over UI, um, it, UI shows that allows me to reload the game. Oh, the show was added here at the end of the sentence. So let's put it over here. It would really blow away my mind if it's able to do all that because it actually has to create the enemy scene. It then has to create some kind of enemy spawner. Then it has to detect the collision. Then it has to create the UI, connect everything in a way that, okay, when you collide with the enemy uh, or uh, when the player collides with the enemy, you have to show the game over UI. Then that UI also has to have a button which when you press it, you get the scene reloaded but it seems that it's doing exactly that um mm -mm -mm. so let's give it a second okay here we should have the one click action because you have actually a lot of things but let's just press apply all and let's see if it was able to basically do everything okay it's taking some time so let's leave it there okay so it's actually kind of spawning the enemies i'm checking here in the remote but uh, every three seconds, so yes, it's doing it now in 22, it should appear here. We have, yeah, but they are kind of outside of the screen or, or something like that. Mm -mm -mm. So yes, they are 450. Oh, but maybe they don't have a visual. Let's check it over here. Sprawl. Yeah. Okay. So let's actually add here a sprite. I will, for example, make them a little smaller, maybe 0.5 and a bigger collision. Okay. Uh, there we go. This should have been done by the AI, but oh wow, why is, why is this over here? Oh, yes, but this I believe is hidden on start somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. So three seconds and this should appear. Okay, there we go. We have the spawner. <laughs> wow, man, this really blows away my mind. Okay, if I collide with them. Okay, in this case, nothing happens. Okay, but there it is still. So it's a pretty good job. So let's say... Or let's just check where this is checking for collisions and the player's not doing it in the... Here it's doing it, I believe. On body enter, yeah, but where is this? Body enter dot connect, okay. Uh, I check in, okay, maybe the player is not in the group player. Let's check it out. Yeah, it seems that it is not, but if we add it, it, it should work, I believe. But once again, here is a... Something that I had to identify and do on my own. But anyway, it's not that bad. Okay. Oh, now it's moving towards me. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, let's collide. Oh, I've killed them. Okay, it wasn't what I asked, but it's kind of doing something. So let's actually, once again, go back to the code. Um, yes, here it's moving towards the player. That's crazy. Check if we hit the player, if we hit the player, get three, get first node in group, main, main dot game over. Okay, but uh, probably this has the game over function. Yeah, but this may not be in the group, correct? So let's add it, main. Okay, so I believe that maybe the AI has some problem accessing the groups or something like that. Okay, so let's check it out. Okay, that's crazy, game over and we have a restart. Which does not work, but this is still a button, so probably it's lacking some script. But yeah, we have literally everything. <laughs> so once again, this is a tool that has been under development uh, maybe for something like six months. Okay, so it, has, it hasn't been that long, I believe. And it's still doing like amazing progress, okay? Of course, it is not an AI that's going to be super helpful for more advanced stuff okay but it is still super helpful checking something like seven minutes what we were able to do without literally having to write even one line of code the only thing we had to do was detect some problems and in this case well i i suppose that it was because uh, the nodes weren't assigned the group so maybe this ai right now in this version 4.4.1 has some problems assigning um these groups but besides that um that is what I can tell you right now. Once again, this is not a paid collaboration or anything like that. Just a tool that I've been following around for the couple uh, few months. And it's really interesting for me to show you. Okay, so that is all for this video. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.